Serangi, located in the Tongariro region, is just a 40-minute drive from Mount Ruapehu. And inside 4,000 hectares of pine forest, hides a secret completely concealed from the outside world. Here, spread over 80 hectares, lies a wild Korean ginseng farm. She has time. She mm -hmm. come here and help me. This is the first and the biggest wild Korean ginseng farm in New Zealand. The seeds were planted six years ago, and this summer is its first harvest ever. Well, good things take time. The root may not look much to the eye, but can actually be worth more than its weight in gold. This farm is a hard work of Korean Kiwi J. Lee, who's been planting millions of seeds here, mostly by himself. Now the smile on his face shines as he holds the first ginseng of his harvest. To make a uh, good successful planting, uh, I plant it every year. Uh, just uh, uh, my efforts uh, uh, put all uh, planting all the ginseng here. Just uh, uh, planting and planting and planting by planting. <laughs> so I'm happy to meet this year. Jay Lee has a Korean degree in veterinary science and is experienced in ginseng-related cancer research, but couldn't find a decent job. He came up with the idea of growing wild ginseng. However, he struggled to get the capital he needed. Not only did he get help from his loved ones, New Zealand Crop and Food Research assisted him in finding a location for his farm. But the best location turned out to be in the Tongariro Rangipo prison forest. So Jay Lee had to ask for help again. And I, I please help me uh, to the government. Uh, it's my first trial in industry. And so we can get a very good chance uh, to make a good industry. So um, they at last uh, gave permission to lease this land. I think he's probably found one of the best sites that he could find. It's got a good loose soil, uh, it's got enough light coming through, and it's got security. Um, in North America, one of the greatest problems for growers is people coming and stealing their ginseng just before they're ready to harvest, so that will be a problem here, I suspect. Good quality ginseng is one of the most prized herbs in Asia. It's been used for health benefits for thousands of years. There's a wide range of quality in the market, and Jay's superior organic ginseng can command high prices. He's hoping the expensive six-year wait will be worth it. The market volume is five billion US dollars. In worldwide, five years, uh, I can make 10 million. While it's the root that has the value, growing in clean green New Zealand has another benefit. There are about 600 beds of ginseng plants like this in this forest. And these leaves produce the only ginseng tea in the world. If we use uh, leaves, we can get many benefits from leaves. It, it might be better than root. Well, you know, it gives them another opportunity for um, work, for work situations in... Uh... Oh, it gives them a bit of work ethic as well, uh, something different. And now they are a very good uh, worker uh, because I trained uh, many times to write picking. Uh, and they have to, they have to uh, sort out the uh, uh, yellow one or brown one. Uh, they follow me good. Yeah. Uh, the leaves is good uh, for cash flow. I want to export to Korea. Uh, but uh, Korea is very hard, and the other way I found, uh, to China. Um, the China uh, need uh, good quality of ginseng. Using his scientific knowledge, he also makes different products like red ginseng drinks and manuka ginseng honey, hoping that diversifying will increase his cash flow. No money yet, but last year uh, we tried marketing. Uh, I sold sixty thousand dollars of what? Oh, it's uh, it's it's a sign of success. <laughs> we can get. I think Jay's gone further, faster than other growers have been prepared to go because he's worked so hard. He's put his whole life into it, and I think he's on the point of realizing that dream. So he's going for it. 
With the business firmly rooted in the ground, he hopes it will grow into an industry New Zealand can be proud of.